So when Lucy approached me to do this unit on Abcraft, I was very reluctant because I had no experience with it whatsoever. Um, and then I, I, after talking with Lucy, she agreed to kick it off with students and with myself, so then I reluctantly agreed. But the agreement with students was that we would learn together. Um, they knew that I was coming at it with no experience, and we, both, we all agreed that we would use each other as resources as well as Lucy. Um, so once we started it with the first lesson, what I found is half the group shut down after the first day because they thought it was stupid, they thought it was hard, they didn't see the purpose. And so what I realized afterwards at the end of the day when I was reflecting on how well it went, first of all, the, the students that shut down were primarily females, which is kind of interesting. Um, but then they also, they shut down because they didn't experience any success whatsoever based on what we had introduced. So we repeated the same lesson the second day use students who had success to co-teach or to pair up with students who were really struggling. And honestly, after that, my job was much easier because they were all engaged. So every day after that, they would come in, and they were very enthusiastic because they experienced success, they understood what its potential was, and they just kept building on that together. So it quickly changed um, to the dynamics of the classroom changed rather drastically. I think you could take over after when you're Okay, thank you. Um, so we established, here's how, how intrinsic their learning became. We established last Friday as a deadline, well let me go back a little bit further, April vacation. I've never received so many emails from students saying, can you help me figure this out? Or do you know if John has the script for this? Or I saw Rebecca's script and it looked similar to what I want to do. We were all just bouncing off each other script and sharing ideas because we were the only resource that we knew of. So during the April vacation they were creating games, which I thought was pretty fascinating. And we had established last Friday as our deadline for the games, and we had a showcase day. And what they did was, as a result of seeing other students' games, they were projecting off the Apple TV and sharing games. As a result, they spent the weekend tweaking their games to make them that much better. So when I came in last Monday anticipating that we were going to be moving on to new concepts, the lesson plan was just thrown out the window because the enthusiasm was so high for them to want to share and showcase what they completed over the weekend that we decided to turn it into our last showcase day. Um, so we had to revisit our plan as a result. So I'm just going to show you a couple of games that they created. They learned how to apply physics and gravity. They learned x and y values and how to plot those x and y values. Um, they learned cause and effect. They created if statements. So if I hit this, what's going to happen? Um, and so to be able to demonstrate it using a device, I think, is so much better. Um, hopefully it'll work. So this is a game that a student created. And tapping play actually takes you into game mode. And she's established gravity where the goal is to eat the cupcakes. And there's different levels. So I don't know if because I missed that other cupcake what's going to happen. But I'm going to come down here. And notice it's working with a sensor of her uh, iPad. So tipping the iPad is, is the object. And she's got several levels on here that she's created. This is very complex. I think even for a seventh grade student, this is extremely complex. but. They were so into it that they spent hours upon hours. Now this one, the object is to collect keys to unlock passageways to the next level. And what they don't realize is that they're programming. Right. And we, keep, we came back to that afterwards. So then she built in two other screens to play again our main menu. So that's just one example. I have many. This is the free version of AppCraft. One of the downsides is that you do get their, I call them Japanese commercials, um, <laughs> you do get their pop-up ads often. Uh, let's see. This one had a similar concept. Um, While we're on the file is that we have a directory of some of the students' games on our presentation that you can see some of them. So again, this one's pretty easy to do. Well, I should say that I shouldn't say that because watch me fail. Uh, but they, and what I found was kids just were drawn. They were they were passing devices around so that they could play each other's games. And see, I lost. <laughs> So what it is is they, we, and we didn't have any criteria that I was grading them on because I had never used this app myself. Um, so what we did was halfway through, we stopped and said, okay, what makes up a good game? Or what would make up a good interactive animation? And we talked about all of those criteria, and then we included those in a rubric that we used to assess their final projects. But the enthusiasm is where I was going. Is 
I don't know that I've ever seen it so high. And so I asked the students, would you have preferred to have a manual or a resource that they could have used? And the, the response speaks volumes to me. And the response, I'll make it larger. No, because I had to work harder to figure it out on my own. I know I just lost it, sorry. Had to work harder to figure, out, figure it out on my own. I learned more and enjoyed it more as a result of having to work so hard. So I thought that's, that really did sum it up quite nicely.